Hey guys, what's up? It's your girl Kim Marie, and you're watching Kim Marie Music TV and I'm back with another review of Pea Valley. This is season one, episode number two. So if you're new here, make sure you subscribe down below to my channel and like this video and share this video with all your friends and make sure you follow me on Instagram and Twitter at Kim Marie Music TV. All right, so I just want to um, put out a disclaimer that this show is not for children okay it is not for children at all um, the reason why I'm reviewing this show is because it is um, black media there are black actresses black actors black writer black producers black 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 all over it right so it's black art and y'all know um, my channel champions black art with all that being said, there's a lot of things that go down on this show that I do not mention verbatim in the review. If you want something like that, there's plenty of other people reviewing the show. Just to let y'all know, just a disclaimer so y'all know what goes down on um, yeah. now. Okay? Alright. So, with all that being said, yet again, we find out what the cloud room is, right? Uh, we see Miss Mississippi in there. And Mercedes in there and they're in there with somebody named Corbin Kyle now Corbin at first um, I thought he was this white guy you could tell he was like um, well as as the episode went on you could tell he had a little money you know and that in that specific scene you couldn't tell he had some money but um yeah so Corbin he has like a little story we find out he's another character that's been added to our lineup right so I'm gonna break this down um, between the different characters I thought it was funny to see um, this stripper this girl what was her name Toya and she had gas and she had farted on somebody I was like Ooh, does this really happen oh no ma'am no ma'am no ham no turkey mm -mm 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 -mm. Okay, so we know that Uncle Clifford is having, um, we knew that he was having issues with like paying um, to keep the club open, right? And uh, we see that he, you know, paying this cop under the table. We find out that he knows the mayor, right? And has like some type of, you know, back and forth with this mayor. Then um, we find out that he is, you know, running Oxy up out of this club um, with, um, somebody that he knows is, that's running back and forth to Houston right and so um, you know it seems to me because I kept thinking like how did Uncle Clifford get so far behind because when I seen that past due notice and it was for $55,000 I said now is this because you just wasn't paying your like the mortgage every month I don't know how it works for a business did you not pay the taxes on it did you like I, I'm not really clear on what was the re what was the reason like what's the reason that he's in this position but regardless he is behind all this money and from what I could gather it kind of seems like he don't really be um, requesting as much money as he could be from the dancers right like it kind of seems like uncle clifford has like this like bleeding heart and he likes to do you know help people out and like do the right thing type of thing at least right enough by his dancers because they're like family right and so i'm wondering if he does that so much that he can't pay to keep the place open that's what it seems like well anyway so um Big L, you know, he's, he's telling Uncle Clifford, like, listen, we're going to have to get this taken care of because we're not going to have nowhere to go and we need, we all need somewhere to go, right? But Uncle Clifford's dealing with a lot of stress. Uh, little murder who, who rolled up in um, the car, who scared the mess out of all of us. I was like, little murder, you have a funny way of showing that you were interested. And then with the flashbacks, I couldn't tell if they had actually engaged in something or if it was like a fantasy thing. I don't know. I will say that this is shot really, really, really well. Like the colors and the um, the soundtrack and then um, even like the words they use. I'm not from Mississippi, but I'm pretty sure slaw and flogging and like all these like different isms are definitely of Mississippi. I really wanted to make sure I got the name of this city and I don't think I wrote it down. Was it Chichura? I don't know. I can't remember the name of the city, but we did find out the name of the city. So Little Murder, he's taken a liking to Uncle Clifford and he felt like, you know, after the cook quits on Uncle Clifford, which is the last thing they need, 
um, Uncle Clifford got to get in there and work their magic in there with the food. I was like, this kitchen ain't passing no health codes. When the mayor was like, y'all ain't even up to par with the, you know, the health code. I felt that. Okay. But Lil Murder is like really trying to get his music on. And, you know, Uncle Clifford is giving him the real, like, listen, this ain't it. This is a slaw, whatever they call it. And so they kind of do this exchange thing where, like, you know, um, Lil Murder's like, let me lace your chicken okay that'll get people to want to give more money they'll be more relaxed you know and then um you can like help me out with my music so they have that little arrangement going this seems to be working out uncle clifford's a little flattered right big l's a little skeptical and little murder is just a hopeful trying to get his music played in this club okay so autumn y'all autumn is getting on my nerves okay because i can't really figure out her character like at first which, I mean, I kind of understand, but then I kind of don't. Because at first she was giving me, um, like, <clears throat> someone who had been abused and is on the run. And, um, you know, is shy, but, like, and clearly not from around here or this walk of life, but has to do something to, like, pull herself back up and, like, um has this daughter back home or back wherever she's from and so you know she's fighting to like <coughs> excuse me to like get herself together but doesn't want to be found type of thing but now i'm feeling like where is all this attitude and entitlement coming from and then like the way she's like nosy looking at this cloud room i'm like okay one are you trying to make more money so that you can then build yourself up so that you can then get your daughter back or when we see you know when her phone comes back to life after it was in the rice i'm like okay this guy that she was with this big old ring that he, either he had on or somebody else had on and then just the way that she carries herself when she was like Yves Saint Laurent right and when she was telling Andre you know in the champagne room about um Delaware and like these offshore account type things I'm like okay maybe um maybe Autumn was into some things bigger right and she was <clears throat> maybe with somebody who was very high profile and you know had to like really like hump like take it down I, I don't I can't even think of the word I'm trying to say like in order to disguise herself she had to really go somewhere where she would probably never be type of thing okay so I don't know like when she had the when she freaked out inside of the car because she has these flashbacks and you know she's thinking about the storm and the rain and um you know being abused like she has all these flashbacks she's clear alcoholic you know drinking every day this cheap liquor um even to the point where she's doing it in the stall i'm like okay but then she's like defensive because i but i can understand that part because you know you don't want to open up to these people just yet you don't know them and you're clearly on the run but then like this entitlement when she was talking to uncle clifford when she brought this fake id and couldn't even girl i'm i'm saying like she's she's smart in a lot of ways but she's dumb why would you not memorize the birthday on there because uncle clifford don't even look like he play around so for her to just be like yeah my birthday yep i like chocolate like no you're already caught and so of course now uncle clifford who is really doing you a solid by letting you still work here like you gonna do this for me and I'm gonna let you have your job and so she was like kind of like being bratty about it like you not my pimp and I'm like girl you you could really just not have a job you could do that so I don't know what's going down gonna go down with Autumn she um you know she ends up giving in because Uncle Clifford wanted to get the scoop on Andre Andre has a liking towards Autumn and so Uncle Clifford's like yeah Autumn do your thing and get him to you know be hooked on you type of thing and she did the thing and he's clearly hooked at this point what I don't understand is he was really giving me good guy vibes and to see him saying babe on the phone click over and then say yeah this is so and so he's in Bora Bora whatever I'm going to call you back I just was like come on bruh come on bruh that made me mad I was real upset I didn't I didn't really holler out on too many um actually I'm not gonna lie I hollered out a few times during this episode but that was definitely a moment where I was like are you kidding me okay okay Andre okay okay all right so Mercedes 
Mercedes, who I really feel like is the main character, uh, um, she is, remember, she is, time is winding down and she's about to be quitting or retiring, honey, because she's trying to open her dance studio with her, like, dancing dolls. And um, she got the girls out in the parking lot. She lets them know this is where we're going to be in a few short, you know, but this time next week. And, you know, in my heart of hearts, I'm feeling like they're not going to be there because what happens is, Anytime you've been doing something for a long time, you become like the fan favorite, the boss pretty much up in there. Um, it makes it harder and harder to leave. And Uncle Clifford is in a space where um, if she leaves, he might go under. Like the place might be gone. So because of her love for him and... Excuse me, I'm sorry y'all, this cherry coat. The um, sense of family and like togetherness and the union up in there she's probably not gonna leave because she wants to do right by uncle clifford and you know make sure they're good so i don't want her to not have her dream but i can understand her wanting to stay so her mama we find out why her mama is pressing so hard i don't know if it's like an insecurity thing because the pastor kind of seemed like he was threatening her but then at the same time, he was like trying to push up on her and like flirting with the mama. I'm talking about the mom. But then I'm like, girl, just tell this man no. Like, it, it, just, it just blows my mind that you're going to sit there so self-righteous and be like, you shouldn't be down there stripping. But hey, by the way, can we hold 20000 and put it in the church account to make it look like we need to be approved for this loan? I just was like... Mercedes, you is better than me. And she, and she said, I want all of my money back all 20k back okay and so the mama looking nervous because you know the pastor was like we running dry so it looks it's looking like they didn't spit her money and mercedes gonna cut the fool so that's probably what's gonna happen what's probably gonna happen is the mama gonna come back and say we ain't got your money look we spent it we'll get it back to you whatever whatever or we spent it we ain't got it and mercedes gonna have to keep dancing at that club to build it back up and that's messed up because you know her mama who keeps condemning her and that's the only reason why mercedes is putting money towards this church because she feels condemned and like she gonna go to hell or something and i'm like oh this that's the worst type of christian right there the worst type i'm telling y'all all right okay so i wanted to say um autumn this guy that she rem that she's um, sorry when she's looking for you know trying to get the names cleared of the ID IDs that she's taken she asks about a Montavious Hill so she asks about the Latoya Savage and you know that's the name that she ends up going with that she ends up getting caught and that ain't her but she asks about Montavious Hill so it's like is this her husband is this like you know because in her phone it looked like they had a nice little family unit so I'm like girl what happened girl something went down i know you guys in the comments are saying that um she's either a hurricane harvey survivor because she had a texas license but other people are saying like it might have been hurricane katrina i just i don't really know because hurricane harvey was not that long ago so yeah that would make more sense but then we can't even really tell what time period this show was shot in so i mean everybody's theory is as good as anybody else right all right also autumn transferred herself 9k was that from a uh, mr hill's account and so is montavious like a famous football player a famous basketball player a famous lawyer stockbroker like he he gotta have money he gotta be something or someone for her to go through all of this to change i don't really know Okay, so the thing with Andre, I told y'all that he had a girl. Yes, yes, he has a girl. And he is really infatuated with Autumn. Um, girl. Okay. Really infatuated with Autumn. But we're here to talk about a little bit more than just Andre. Y'all know that he was taking the pictures of the place. And he's trying to get them together for these brothers because they're trying to build this casino, right? So we see him in this field of cotton. And y'all, there were so many like slave 
vibes colorism vibes in the show and i'm just wondering if they were there because of that's how it really is in mississippi or that's how it is you know in the deep parts of the south i don't know but the colorism stuff you want white liquor or you want brown liquor okay you don't like melanin like it's just like okay guys like we gotta stop we got at some point we gotta stop i understand like it's a thing under the brown the brown paper paper bag test i get it i get it but we cannot y'all didn't tell me this braid was sticking out we cannot move on or this is sticking out y'all just got me out here looking crazy um we can't move forward as a people until we can love all of us for everything right <laughs> so um so yeah we see that part but he's out in this field of cotton and they're like you want to pick some and y'all my heart jumped anytime i see people who have like um you know how you can buy like at kirkland's or michael's or anywhere like the fresh cotton or the artificial cotton and people like put it as centerpieces or like around their house it just makes my skin crawl because it just makes me think of like my ancestors who were like getting picked and, and pricked and in the hot sun and being like beat and bleeding and like i just i understand we wear cotton but it's not the same as me seeing like the little cotton balls it just mm -mm. Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. so yeah so we see him talking to these two brothers and that's where we find out who Corbin Kyle is the guy from the cloud room earlier okay but basically they're trying to talk work this deal because they want to do this casino um but they're all brothers the two Kyles who, who live on a plantation they're obviously you know from like the same mom and dad but Corbin he said he his mama was the maid okay so there's some more slave talk for you Corbin is half black and the dad died left all the money and everything to all his sons and so now they have a dilemma because they want Corbin to put in on this and Corbin got other plans okay now I might have mixed some of that up y'all let me know down in the comments all right but Corbin stays in the club spending all his daddy's money and um you know he's trying to get Andre on the wave and he's trying to buy him out he's trying to do all the things and Andre who seemed like he was righteous at first doesn't do it but you know finds time for autumn later to do all of that okay um i think the only thing that i'm missing is um this car wash slash, slash i don't even remember the name of it uh somebody tweeted it to me i wonder if i could find it real quick i don't think so i don't think so i don't think so they had the girls out there washing the the car and changing the oil honey in the in stilettos pumps in the club in the tight skirts and white shirts and um they was all on facebook live and i just was like i cannot deal yeah i'm not gonna find i'm not gonna find the name of it because i don't even remember where i saw it anyway so that it's like an annual thing they're out there they're trying to get these funds get this money right and uncle clipper is reassuring like uh big l like listen we gonna we gonna make ends meet we gonna do it like we always do it and i'm just like <laughs> uncle clifford i don't know how y'all gonna get fifty six thousand dollars and then really you you might want to get go ahead and get a hundred so you're not even in this position anymore okay so they they walking on thin ice i want to say before i forget uncle clifford the looks be on okay uncle clifford was giving us some frida Kahlo realness i seen that on um the writers um uh, Twitter page she let us know that that's what Uncle Clifford was channeling tonight and that Frida Kahlo look it was on I mean from down to the colors and the highlight and the even the sideburns and the flowers and the it just looked amazing okay so yeah so um that's where we see this greasy mayor pull up that's where you know um Autumn has her freak out because she gets you know stuck in there ends up being on child lock um, I just was like, Mercedes, how is she washing these cars and these stilettos in this, like, latex outfit, girl? I was like, oh, my gosh. Anyway, that was this week's episode. You guys comment down below what you guys thought about P-Valley Season 1, Episode 2. I am Cameray, and this is Cameray Music TV, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.